Hello, everyone. Welcome to the October edition of the Azure Static Web Apps Community Standups. My name is Thomas, and I will be your host for this community standup. Today, we have a short and sweet schedule. We're going to be going through a couple community contributions as well as upcoming events. And we are going to be talking about our two newest features, traffic splitting and snippets for Azure Static Web Apps. So I like to keep it short and sweet, so let's jump right into it. To start, let's uh, review some of the community contributions that we've had over the past month. Um, in terms of upcoming events, we have Microsoft Ignite that's going to be happening in November from the 14th to the 17th. Uh, there's also an online portion, so that's also a good opportunity to tune in and learn how to build intelligent apps. As well, there's the .NET Conf happening around the same time. And I mentioned this because I know a lot of you are using Blazor and deploying Blazor on Azure Static Web Apps. And so if you're interested in learning about .NET 8 Blazor and what they're coming out with server-side rendering, make sure to tune in. And then we also know that we have an upcoming Angular event. The Google team is going to be releasing Angular 17 and talking about it. And we've been working with them to make sure that you can continue to host Angular 17 apps on static web apps. I think they have some pretty fun, pretty exciting new nuggets of, uh, of functionality that are coming out. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. Uh, we also had some great community contributions in terms of blog posts. And instead of just looking at these links, let me go ahead and share with you what we have. Uh, by the way, first of all, uh, this is our newsletter. Uh, I posted this newsletter just recently to complement this community live stream. If you want to have access to any of the links that are uh, in this session, you can see that I have all the community highlights as well as the upcoming events in here. So first off, in terms of community highlights, we have uh, John Kilmister, who um, blogged about deploying Astro on static web apps. Astro, which is an up and coming static site generator, uh, very interesting for the ability to have all the different frameworks within one. Uh, so that's a great blog post over here. We also have Henry Sanchez, who blogged about deploying SvelteKit on Azure Static Web Apps. Uh, that's a great article using the adapter for uh, SvelteKit. So here in this case, using the uh, uh, static adapter for, for spell. Next up, we have a longtime contributor, John Riley, blogging about uh, using Azure Application Insights and linking it to the Azure Static Web Apps resource via a bicep template. So it goes into the details of how you can configure a bicep template in order to configure that. And then we have Kieran, who blogged about the end-to-end -end sort of journey of getting started with Azure Static Web Apps, uh, all the way from a GitHub repository to creating an application in the portal, and then seeing your GitHub Actions workflow being added, and then finally uh, being able to see your Azure Static Web Apps. So some great community contributions, some great blogs over the past month of October, and we're looking forward to what you'll write in November. In terms of upcoming events, I already mentioned .NET Conf 2023. If you're a Blazor developer and you're looking forward to seeing how Blazor is going to happen with uh, .NET 8, what are the new updates, um, definitely recommend tuning in, as well as Ignite, where there's going to be a heavy focus on AI transformation, building intelligent apps, and all that. With that being said, uh, that was all that we had in terms of community contributions for the month of October. Now we get to dive into uh, the demo and a big spotlight for the this session. We're going to be talking about two new features that we launched with Static Web Apps over the past month, snippets and traffic splitting. Um, so these are two features that we've been we've been listening to you all. Uh, we know that you want to have the productivity and the flexibility when you are building your front end web applications. And we've listened and come up with these features, and then we've finally launched them. So we're really excited. And in, in, in this session, I have the opportunity to demo uh, these two features hand in hand. Uh, I just announced, I just posted this this morning. Um, 
uh, on our community GitHub. If you don't know about our community GitHub, this is where we post new updates, uh, taking issues. It's really for the, the um, collaboration and it complements all of the Azure branded um, communications, the Azure updates and all that. Here we can have that, that discussion, that back and forth. And so we're talking about snippets and traffic splitting. Uh, I added a couple of screenshots and then you could see uh, the different features. Okay, I just had the chance to look at the chat. Sergey, Alex, Lefetch, hi, hi to you all. Uh, nice to have you uh, with us. Um, and I hope you're excited for the demo that I have prepared for you regarding uh, snippets and traffic splitting. Okay, without further ado, I want to jump into it. Um, I'm going to be starting with snippets. Now, snippets is a new feature that we've added in Azure Static Web Apps. Um, as you all know, sometimes when we are using, we're writing our applications, our websites, we're hosting them, uh, at times we want to inject either a snippets code, uh, whether it's scripts, global UI elements, shared scripts across pages. Uh, a common example of that is an analytics script, right? So you might want to add in client side analytics. Uh, that those are often via like a snippet of JavaScript code. And instead of having to go and add that to every page of your website or configuring your build to add that to every page of your website, what you can do now is go and configure it with your Azure resource. So for instance, here I have a pretty basic application, pretty basic website, it's a sort of an e-commerce example that I've, I've demoed in the past. But in this case, I wanted to add an analytics snippet. Uh, snippet. So I'm using uh, Microsoft Clarity Microsoft Clarity, which is a uh, behavioral analytics option. So if I send it over here and we take a look at Microsoft Clarity, it's similar to uh, other web analytics solutions, the Google Analytics uh, um, and other options. But in this case, we have the ability to see more of the behavior of how our users interacting with our website. And so when I go into Clarity and I wanted to add um, this to my website in terms of the setup, I can go ahead and directly add this uh, script into my website. And so what I could do is in order to use um, and use snippets to add it to my static web app, I can head on over to my configuration tab. And now you'll see this new uh, tab within this configuration page. Here you can go and add uh, a snippet. So when you're configuring your snippet, you can specify, hey, I want to add it either to the head or the body of my page, depending on when you want the script to be executed. Uh, you can name it, but you can also specify whether it's appended or prepended to that section of your HTML page. And then the other thing that you can do is select specific environments to which this snippet is going to be uh, added. So in this case, you can see I've already had I've already pasted my snippet. I want to add it to the production environment. And as soon as we save, I already have it saved in this case. But as soon as we save, we can go ahead and refresh your page. Now, without having done any changes to the actual code, we'll see that that snippet gets injected at the bottom of the head section of my page. So this is that snippet here, that analytics snippet that I mentioned before for my web analytics solution, in this case, Clarity. So this is a very convenient way to manage the any additional global snippets um, or global scripts that need to be shared across all the different um, pages of your application. You can also easily specify the, the region where you want this snippet to be injected and also which environments to add the, the snippets to. And it being um, located in the Azure resource and specific to the Azure resource, you don't have to make any changes to your actual application code and handling the different environments and then jumping through hoops in order to share certain snippets with teams. It's, it's always um, assigned to the Azure resource. So that was probably the quickest demo I could give you on snippets. Of course, it can work with any type of snippets you have. Um, if you want to just have a simple console.log, hi, you can also add that type of snippets. I don't know if you want to add some type of, of uh, shared JavaScript snippet, 
But with that, you'll see that after saving it, it just goes ahead and updates and then reflects directly on your website. So live update, live demo will try this. I added this specific uh, console.log uh, to my JavaScript. And then if I refresh my page, what we'll see is that that actually gets injected into, uh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. It gets injected into my application and then you can see that it also gets executed. So if I take it over here to my info, I can see that it actually logged, the JavaScript actually executed. So that's exactly as we had wanted it. Okay, now I want to go ahead and set it up back to how it was back to my web analytics because I want to talk about um, our next feature, traffic splitting. So this was snippets. Now I want to talk about traffic splitting. With traffic splitting, you can split your production traffic across multiple environments of your site. And this is really powerful because what it allows you to do is to either gradually roll out new versions of your site, new changes to a subset of your actual users so that you can see and adjust in real time based off of the feedback that you're getting and based off of the analytics that you're getting, um, whether you want to make any rollbacks. Um, so this can be configured within the environments tab. And here we added a new button. You'll see that there's this new column regarding the traffic. So with traffic splitting, you can specify, hey, my production traffic, I want to share it across multiple environments. In this case, 100% of my traffic is going to my production environment. But what I can do is add any of the other environments as, um, sort of, as destinations for my production traffic. So in this case, I have two preview environments. I've already created them in my GitHub, and that has been um, has created my environments in my static web apps resource. And now what I can do is I can add both of them to my production traffic. Of course, I could go ahead and add more than one, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to make only a split between two versions, my production app and a, a new change. So in this new change, I wanted to go ahead and let me show you this new change here in my preview environment. Um, I wanted to make it more obvious that we had a sale going on, let's say, and so that I could see what the impact is on my website. So this is my preview environment. And then if I showed you the previous version, we'll see that there's not as much of an accentuation. The colors are different. The header is different. And then I added discounts to the individual prices so that we could see and track the difference. So right now, these are two separate uh, environments. And what we're going to do is we're going to split our production traffic across these two environments. So if I head on over here and then uh, tag traffic splitting, I can go ahead and tag this new environment to receive 50% of the traffic. Now, I don't want to take a chance and I want to be able to demo this properly. So I'm going to force basically all of my traffic to go to this new version. And what's going to happen is we do this in a smart way where we'll uh, sticky specific sessions. So if there's continued uh, usage of um, a specific version, we'll, it, we'll enable that customer to continue on the version that they were previously using. So in this case, we're falling within that 1% because we could we started off the version with the production site. So here, everything's working. And what I could do is open a separate tab, let's say in a different browser. And then let me bring this browser into the page. All right, so if I head to that same production URL, what we'll see is that within the same URL, we're now serving a different version of the website. So I just went ahead and hard refresh this page to show you that we're now accessing the same URL and receiving the, the, the other version of our website. And so in this case, I can see that uh, um, as a developer, I can see the difference between these two versions of the site and analyze the behavior and then make any decisions that I want based off of that. 
So this is really convenient if ever you want to do any gradual feature rollouts, or you can also use this to implement any type of testing strategies, split testing or A-B testing strategies. And that's actually what I want to show you next. I want to show you how you can use snippets and traffic splitting together in order to track analytics across different versions of your site, similar to an A-B testing uh, method strategy. So what we're going to do, and you may have noticed that I've already set up my, my site this way, is if we head back into our static web app, we'll see that we are currently serving main and sale B test, these two environments, my production environment and this new test environment. And I want to go ahead and be able to analyze the difference between these two versions of the site. Well, what I can do is I can head on over to my configuration tab, specify uh, for a snippet, we'll add a sp separate snippet specifically to the other environment that we're testing, right? So here I have my default environment, my production environment, and have the script that I showed you earlier for my clarity. What I can do in addition is have a separate snippet. And in this separate snippet, I'll add the same clarity code. But what I can do is I can tag this specific version of the site. Here I'm adding window.clarity set version B. This is a feature of this specific web analytics platform. If you're using any other web analytics platform, there's probably a way for you to custom tag it or tag different versions of your site. And what it's going to allow us to do is when analytics are sent on over to the Clarity platform, we'll be able to dig through and filter according to the version of the website that customers were on, that end users were on. And then we'll be able to compare the data from both versions. So this is typically what you do when you're implementing split testing and A-B testing. You want to be able to have that data to make a data decision, uh, a data-driven decision regarding if that change was a positive or a negative change. So this is what I have configured. I've applied this specific snippet to my sale B test environment. And as I mentioned before, we still have that split testing. So what's happening now is when I go over to my other browser and I'm loading with the same URL, uh, I'm lo loading one of these, um, I'm technically loading the, the environment that I'm testing right now, even though it's at the same production URL. And what we'll see is that that snippet where I tagged it as my B test or as this specific version, we'll see that it gets added to my analytics script. And then when it's sending off to the analytics provider, in this case, Clarity, it'll take note of that. And then I'll be able to filter through my data. So I actually want to show you what I'm seeing on the Clarity side of things, because I think it's really interesting. So for this simulated A-B test, what I can do is if I head over back to my web analytics. So this is Clarity. Um, it's, it's an open source tool for behavioral analytics, but you could be using any other type of analytics platform, you, Google analytics, any other type of open source web analytics as well. I want to show you how the data comes through in clarity. So I've set up my AB testing on my web app, uh, on my static web app. And now what I can do is I can filter through my analytics and I added this custom tag, and I showed you this in the snippet before. I added a specific key value pair of version B. And now when I apply this custom filter of this custom tag, we'll see that I get only the data for the B test version of my site. And now I can see the difference between the analytics, uh, see how the, the see the performance of that version of the website and any type of recordings that I have for this specific user. So this is really powerful when you think about it, the ability to gradually test new features and new changes on real production users and the ability to quickly roll back any changes. It's very powerful. And when you combine that with snippets and the ability to specify different snippets for different environments, you can see that the potential is very great. Um, so this was a very quick 
demonstration. I had the chance to show you how we can add a snippet to a production environment. In this case, it was a web analytics. I also showed you how to add some type of JavaScript behavior across pages. And then I also showed you how we can split the traffic, the production traffic, our real user production traffic across multiple different environments so that we can gradually test and gradually roll out new changes and how we can use both of these features in order to both have various versions of the site being served from a production URL at once while having different sets of snippets that are giving us either analytics or separate behaviors so that we can properly track the effect of our changes. So this was the, I guess, end-to-end -end test of how we can use both snippets um, and traffic splitting together. I hope you try this out see how this can help with you. I know that analytics, um, adding scripts for analytics is, is very convenient in this way. And it's probably the way that most people will recommend. And I, I think a lot of folks will be adding it to their site this way. But adding any other type of global shared UI elements, whether it's a banner or another type of widget, can be very convenient with snippets. And the same thing with traffic splitting in case you want to go ahead and flight any new changes to the application. So. I really recommend you try this out, add this type of, of testing to your application, this type of convenience around the snippets and injecting your snippets for analytics to your website um, and any other script. I really recommend it. And what we're doing right now is we are definitely listening for feedback. Um, in here, in this GitHub discussion, we, as we've done in the release of multiple um, features in the past, we're active in the comments. I just posted this a couple minutes ago, but um, we're active and we're always listening for feedback. And we always want to uh, hear how we can improve static web apps so that we can improve um, the platform for you to host your websites. OK, that was the demo that I had for you today. I shared you uh, this specific sample application and we used it with Clarity. I think it was really interesting. Uh, we can see that uh, our, our Clarity tool gave us some analytics about our web website. And that was it. That was the, it for the demo that I had for you today. I mentioned it before, I like to keep it short and sweet. Um, I see in the chat that both Vivek and Jorge found the, the, the features to be really interesting. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing your feedback, really looking forward to seeing what you end up doing with uh, traffic splitting and snippets. I think the, there's a lot of potential, especially around the ability to add code at runtime very quickly and change versions from one to another with traffic splitting very quickly, much faster than making any new deployments. So I strongly recommend at least trying out these features. It's basically, um, there, there, there's basically very little risk involved with, with trying these out. So definitely give us a try. Uh, I added some helpful links. These are links to the docs, but I showed you how you can access these new features in the portal. And we're definitely listening for feedback in our community GitHub repository, as well as our Twitter account. Now, time for some Q&A. Um, I have Alex Robin who asked, is there any update on GA for Next.js server-side rendering on Swap? We're told target date and the summer, still no news. We are very much working on Next.js GA. Um, we, for the, for Next.js and hosting Next.js on static web apps, we had to review how we were doing our platform um, for specifically for Next.js review how we had our architecture going. And it's actually, I'm happy to say that it's in the final phases where we are um, in the testing and the deployment of these different changes. And so when we gave it out that target date, you know, it was really because we saw this as a, a something that was happening soon. And we believe that that'll happen soon. Now, I cannot give a specific target date because uh, as you know, there are always unexpected events happening, um, but we are actively working on this. We have dedicated engineers working on the next SGA. So what I'll say is uh, it's, a, it's a work in progress and it'll be coming out soon, Alex. 
Okay, excellent. Feel free to leave any other Q and A's that you may have, um, and we'll make sure to to check them out. But if there are no more questions for today, I guess we can we can wrap it up. Now, you know me; I like to keep it short and sweet. And if and if we can keep it under a half hour, then it's easier to review and view after the fact. So I think on that note, we can end it there. Thanks everyone for joining today's uh, community standup. We are always listening to your questions, to your comments, and our GitHub community, our community GitHub. Let me go ahead and and show you that uh, in case you missed it. If you go to Azure's Static Web Apps. Um, on GitHub, you'll see that here we have uh, a lot of discussions ongoing with our issues. So if you have any additional questions that we didn't get to in this community standup, please let us know here. Uh, I'm pretty active in here, so uh, you'll see that uh, I get involved and I am answering a lot of questions here. And if you have any other broader questions, uh, the discussions tab is also available. You can also join us on, on Twitter, of course, and we look forward to seeing you in the next community standup in November. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and have a nice day.